as you know, we're in the middle of an apocalyptic extinction level event right now, it feels like, right? And so I'm sure you've heard so much about AI and what it's going to do and we're going to lose jobs or it's going to take over. The possibilities of AI are endless right now and we're just in the beginning phases of it. So there's a lot of information going around that's pretty negative. And that's why we're doing the series to understand how it can impact us, Mm -hmm. what to look out for. But You know, we thought maybe it's time we do something a little more uh, on the positive side, a little more educational, and look behind the machine to kind of understand how this technology is working. Uh, So it will help us be better at our jobs, stay on top of the technology, and continue to be relevant. So today we're chatting with Marcus Silvera, a leading expert from Rouge Motion Capture. And he's going to guide us through this technology, and we're going to learn about how it is being applied in new and interesting ways, a.k.a. the adult film industry, um, <laughs> and, uh, and, and le- uh, how to stay on top of the technology as producers and how to learn about it, how it's going to be integrated in what we do, especially in commercials and branded content. Yeah, and you know what? For my video game fans out there, he, we may even talk about that as well. So grab Ooh. a drink and roll the intro. Welcome to the Producers Happy Hour with your hosts, Sister Christian and Lawrence Lewis. We are two producers with over 20 years of experience each, chatting over drinks about what it means and what it takes to be a good producer. Join us for insightful interviews and informative show topics that will help you get through your toughest jobs, biggest production challenges, and most difficult clients. So grab a drink. You're going to need it. And let's get to it. Because making sh** is hard. What's up, Lawrence? Oh, you know, so much. So much is up in this summer heat. (laughs) Tell me about it. Second summer in L.A. now, and it's hot as fuck. It is. It is. Welcome to L.A. during yeah. the mass ex- extinction event that's happening. I know. Like, <laughs> LA I was like, why am I still arms. working? <laughs> exactly. Believe me, that's what I told the IRS. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And of course, <laughs> during the biggest labor movement in the industry uh, since sliced bread. So we yeah, are Yeah, 60 years plus since, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's been a summer in L.A. so far. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it really has. And uh, I am self-medicating with a cocktail. I hope oh. you are, too. Yes. Um, but wh- while we do, we're going to continue our series on AI. And, uh, you know, it, 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 it's really easy to get lost in, in all the, the doomsday aspects of AI. So right. instead of just learning about how it's going to change what we do or impact mm-hmm. what we do, we thought we should maybe learn a little bit more about it. So today we've got an expert with us. There's an expert in the room uh, in motion capture and actor scanning, Marcus Silvera. Hello. Hi. Thank you so much for joining us. Marcus is with Rouge Motion Capture. Welcome to the show. Are you enjoying a happy hour with us? Yes, yes. I have a I have an old fashioned. It's my go to drink. Ooh, nice. Lovely. Like what what's your favorite whiskey? You know, I I, I kind of bounce around. People give me give me shit. Yeah. But uh uh I, I love Jameson, yeah. you know. But a lot of the time <laughs> yeah. it's between Jameson, mm-hmm. Maker's Mark, or uh the captain that I have in the in the old fashioned. Uh. Keep it simple. I mean, sometimes it depends on your mood. Exactly. You know, right? exactly. You don't have to be exactly. aligned to one brand only. <laughs> Lawrence, what are you drinking? Yeah, I was a little short on time today, so I was just going to make a, a quick Negroni. You know, one part sweet vermouth, one part gin, one part uh, Campari, but I didn't have any vermouth. So I'm doing it with maraschino oh, liqueur. I know. Maraschino oh, liqueur. So It sounds delicious. It is delicious, and I don't know what to call it, but maybe we can name it on the show. We'll figure it out. Uh, yeah. I, what are you drinking? I already, I'm already going to name it. It's called The Last Minute. There you so go. So <laughs> I am jumping on the bandwagon of um, elderflower and have uh, found Q makes tonics, and now they have an elderflower tonic, and I'm having it with vodka, and it is delicious. It's fucking delicious. So I, I recommend it. It's super easy and um, light it's nice. Wonderful. And we're looking for sponsors for sure. <laughs> we're looking for sponsors. <laughs> Cheers to everyone. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. All right. But before we get started, you know, in this crazy world of production, we have so many topics to talk about. And the things we talk about here on the show, we could go so much deeper on, but we simply don't have enough time in these episodes. So that's why we created our episode guide. It's packed with valuable resources, references, and industry updates. Our episode guide keeps you in the loop and helps you stay ahead of the game. 
Because let's face it, things move at lightning speed in this industry. They sure do. So to get the episode guide, sign up on our website, producershappyhour.com, or click the link in our show notes. Okay, here we go. Born in Nyack, New York, and and grew up in the Bronx. What's up? Marcus (laughs) has been in the industry since he was 19 years old and has always had a love for video games and movies. Same here. Mm -hmm. His credits include Marvel movies such as Avengers, Age of Ultron, and Ant-Man. And his most recent credit in video games is Star Wars Jedi Survivor. Marcus, welcome to the show. Hello, hello. Uh, So happy to be here. Very excited. Uh, I just love that it's a podcast that's like talking about stuff that I do. (laughs) (laughs) I know, right? Gosh. Same. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's why we started it. We just want to talk about the shit we do. And, you know, maybe someone's listening. Might as well. They keep us they keep us for too many hours. So <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. 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 I mean, we just we talk about the same stuff just together when we're alone. So we right. thought, hey, right. why not, re- why not <laughs> record tell it? everyone else about yep. it? Someone exactly. might like it. I don't know. Marcus, why don't you start by letting us know, you know, most of our audiences and commercials and and branded content. Uh, we got a lot of features people as well, but we don't really experience a lot of motion capture in, in, in what we do. So why don't you explain what you do at Rouge and mm-hmm. what services you all offer? Rouge, I mean, the studio uh, itself has been around for a long, long time. Not as Rouge. As Rouge has only been a couple of years now, but um, we are mainly a motion capture studio. We're a service provider. So anybody who's looking for motion capture use in commercials, film, video games, television, anything that needs mocap, we can, uh, you know, help provide that for them. Uh, This includes shooting the mocap, the post process, which is cleaning up the mocap and the data and all the sorts of things you would need to get somebody that high quality motion capture that you get to see on the screen. And then as far as the other main service, we do have a big, it looks like a time machine, honestly, but (laughs) we have this big rig that has, I wish I knew the number of cameras. I want to say it's somewhere in like 60 to 70 cameras or more that are able to scan a person's body completely and that we can use that for creating like digital likenesses. Did we see that on your website when I was there? It looks like almost like a stand up tanning thing. Yes. Yes. <laughs> but it's cameras yes. instead of like blazing lights. That's exactly yeah. what it is. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. <laughs> Pretend that I've never done motion capture mm-hmm. before. How would you explain motion capture and actor scanning technologies? Sure. And ha- like, and how has it evolved over the years? Oh, excellent. Yeah. I mean, so it's come a long way. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you guys remember the film Monster House, they used the, mo- the uh, I almost called them the, the the motion capture balls. I will never say yeah. that. People in the motion capture industry be like, what do you call them? Um, so there is a reflective, they are, they do look like balls, but they are reflective. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and they we call them markers. And the markers back then yes. were ginormous. Mm-hmm. They had to wear them all over their face. And over the years now, we have reduced the amount of markers you need, not only on the face, but on the body. And so for someone who's never done motion capture, you basically put on what looks like a wetsuit. It's like a big onesie. And we stick these reflective markers on your body with Velcro. And we get upwards of anywhere from 58 to 68 markers on you. And we use that to record the motion of your body using a uh, camera system that shoots infrared light at those reflective markers. That info, that light is then beamed back, and then the camera goes, oh, there's a person there. And it can follow your body and your movements and record everything uh, from 360 degrees around you. And most of these actors that are doing it, right, because uh, I do I do a little bit of voiceover. Mm-hmm. I know a lot of voice actors because they are who has mm-hmm. ha, they are the people who have been voicing the characters in video games. They've been the ones doing these movements and being the suits being put on them and, and acting out the scenes. Is that mm-hmm. is that right? Yeah. So uh, previously, uh, early on in motion capture's life, it was only referred to as motion capture because it was really a lot of the things you see in video games. Anytime you move the control stick and your character moves around, a lot of that was motion capture. It was what we call locomotion. It's just someone walk forward, walk to the left, walk to the right. And we captured every single directional possibility in order to capture that motion. And that was all you did. Now, with the inclusion of head-mounted cameras and the cameras that are looking at the face and watching the face motion, it's now become a lot more of what we call performance capture, meaning we're getting your body, your face, we're getting the full package of what you performed you know, on the stage that day and trans, uh, translating that to your character to the best of our ability. So, 
So I right. just finished playing <laughs> Horizon Zero Dawn, um, which, you know... Okay. That yeah. that is it's it's like you're playing a movie or you're like you actually have control over a person. Yes. And it is um the technology from the first mm-hmm. round of the game. Sorry, I'm gonna geek out. The first round versus this new one that just came out, you know, in the last six months is astounding. The advancement since twenty seventeen, probably yeah. twenty eighteen to right. now, six years, it's like holy shit. Epic created uh, these very digital, like lifelike human characters called metahumans a couple of years ago. And that has been sort of what people have been monitoring as where we're going to go in creating digital likenesses without the need of scan- scanning someone necessarily. Um, recently, metahuman animator was able to take those metahumans. And not only can I take a couple of photos of you on my iPhone and get your likeness onto these metahumans, I can now record a video of you speaking, get your likeness and your face motion to an almost like 80 to 90% degree of fidelity of what you would see in a final face animation. Right. So is that is that like what deep fakes, <laughs> deep fakes are? And that is that the same technology? Similar technology, Similar. yes. It's okay, all yeah, using it. machine learning. Okay. It's just being mm-hmm. utilized in different ways. Got um, it. But to answer your question about the, or to the, to the point of Horizon Zero Dawn, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, a lot of the technology is not just graphical, but face animation has just come such a long way that we're starting such to get away way. from Uncanny mm-hmm. Valley. Yeah, it's, right. it's, it's crazy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So when you say machine learning, that is what we are all affectionately now calling AI. Is that correct? Yes. Is um, there a nuance there or is that... Skynet, that that kind of stuff. (laughs) (laughs) I I feel like a part of me wants to say yes and no that there is a nuance. I mean, machine learning is what's powering all these AI tools that you're seeing today. You know, the things like Uh, Mid Journey, which is creating the art, the, the software that's like mimicking people's voices. It you have to use machine learning to get that level of artificial intelligence. I guess you could say machine learning is teaching the student. The AI uh-huh. is now presenting the knowledge it has been taught. Oh, God. Uh, that is, if that makes that's, sense. That's, that's, that thank is you. the quote for Thank you. That's the quote for the, that's so <laughs> the promo. Because for us, it, it, uh, live action producers yeah, over here. <laughs> who have been, you know, we work with, you know, non-meta humans. Mm-hmm. <laughs> also known as real humans. So right, yeah, right. Is, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All these advancements have been because of machine learning and AI. Is that is, is that's mm. what's moved this forward? Yeah, so machine learning has been being used for quite some time now. I would say 10 years, 10 plus years. It's actually been around. Right. We just are starting to see an abundance of that work starting to surface. Mm -hmm. Um, Something as, uh, I know we just had the new Spider-Verse film, but even the first Spider-Verse film was the first movie to use machine learning. That's how they were achieving a lot of that comic book look initially um, and why they were able to do it. Even though it took, I think, still still six years to make that movie, it could have been way longer had they not had machine learning as a tool. But essentially... Yeah, machine learning has just been being used for deep fakes. It's been being used for metahuman animator. It's being used for, like I said, copying of people's voices. And ultimately, it's just you're just teaching the computer all different sorts of variables. And 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 in the example of someone's face, I'm going to teach it your face from the front side, every angle. Then I'm going to teach it your face in every type of lighting and every type of color of lighting. And when I give it enough information and I let it think it over a little bit, I could say, hey, can I have... Marcus in a blue and uh, green lighting in a forest. And all of a sudden it goes, well, you showed me a forest. You showed me Marcus in green lighting. So why not I just put it together? And that's how it starts that's to insane. build those. Yeah. Uh, it's really, I can imagine the work you do is exciting and inventive. And you're on the forefront of this amazing new technology that can do so much good for the world. But are you also a little scared? It's like I'm looking at the flight attendant on a plane that's going through turbulence and I'm like, are you afraid? Because if you're not afraid, I feel a little bit calmer. That's fair. That's a great way. That's a great analogy. I would say for me, it's yes and no. Again, I'll probably, I'm probably going to give that answer a lot because I always try to see, I always try to see both sides, right? My One of my favorite quotes mm-hmm. in life is to read books by people you disagree with. It's just, for me, yeah. it's one of the best ways to grow and learn. Mm-hmm. So yeah, there's a part of me that is scared of, of what AI can do. But on the other hand, I'm hoping that it's handled well enough to where it doesn't take away my job. It takes away the boring parts of my job. That's what I'm hoping it does. So 
for a lot of the things I've done, whether it be in film or games, there's always some step, step one, step two of making anything that's tedious and slow and boring. And I'm super excited for AI to just take that over. If it can just do that well, yeah. and I don't yeah, have to yeah, do it yeah. because it allows the creative side of me to be at the forefront as opposed to the technical side. Because mocap is very technical. AI handling it is very technical. Now, using some of this technology, you're able to just be like, what can my brain, what can I get out of my imagination and onto a screen in seconds? And it's going to allow people who can't draw, people who may not have the skills, maybe the time to go to school, maybe the the, the access of money to go to school, to be mm -hmm. able to at least be more creative using these outlets, as long as the people who have the power of regulating these outlets don't allow everyone else to go crazy. My belief is that AI will not take my job. A human using AI will. I see. Okay. Right. Because um, in the end, it really is about the end result and what your um, motives are, right? Correct. When I mentioned deep fakes earlier, yeah. <laughs> it's because that I feel like it's being used in nefarious ways. So you're yes. right. The intent behind it is really at this point still the human. Yes. Yeah. The intent mm -hmm. uh, matters greatly. Yeah, as long as the regulation can get to a point where mm -hmm. it's like, hey, these are tools. This is not the be all end all. It doesn't make your artist less valuable. It's a tool for your artist to use. Those are the really the important conversations that need to be had. And they are starting to happen now because the rapid increase in use of AI is is actually almost hard to catch up to at this point. I mean, oh, we're yeah. already seeing, yeah. you know, Marvel's uh, Secret Invasion used it as their intro. They clearly used Mid Journey for their intro. They did, and it was a little off. <laughs> it, it was. It was. I'm a big Marvel fan, so I can geek out about why I think it was great. Same. But yeah, it's just it's important to to regulate to to yeah. a certain extent and allow it to just be a tool mm -hmm. and not take over my job. It's not a replacement. Yeah. Correct. Which is a, 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 a yeah. That requires a little bit of faith in capitalism. Yeah. <laughs> but it's not to say people are not going to misuse it, because they will. People will misuse it. the regulators. It. Well, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, exactly. It's, it's about the regu regu regulating because, yeah, I, it would make so much more profit if they could get rid of all of us and just replace us completely with AI. But knowing that it's the intention behind it is, is yeah, having that creative partnership between human and AI mm -hmm. is where the positive path of this could be going forward. Yes. Yeah, I agree. Could you talk about how AI enables the capture of body movements from video footage and its potential applications? Sure. We're starting to see a lot of what's being called markerless motion capture, and it's coming from many different companies. And essentially, um, from my understanding and the way that I mentioned how machine learning works, where I teach it a bunch of things and different variables, they are using machine learning to teach computers just, hey, I need you to be able to identify a human. If I had, if I, if I gave you a crowd of chickens and there was a human in there, can I just give the computer the picture and will it say, hey, that's a human and be correct? Then can you identify 10, then 20, then 50? Can you identify every person in a concert? And when it's able to do all of those, all of those things, you find yourself with technology of, I set up my iPhone, I hit record, I run it through an app, and it just gives me motion capture data because it recognizes that I'm a human, it knows what my arms and legs are, and it's all because of what was taught through the machine learning process on their that that app's back end. And that's how it's able to capture movement. Right. Was that the plot to Fast and Furious 7? <laughs> I, was like, I was like, there's so many. What was the plot Wait, to that but, one? Yeah. It was well, it was it was like the the spider, like this the thing that could pick out a human from anywhere in the world. It would it would look oh, into yeah, yeah. Yeah, kind of. So, kind of. Yeah. I mean, this could definitely be used for like identification technology and, and right. you know, on government levels and things like that. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah, yeah that right. it, we're getting back into the nefarious use of the this scary, amazing. The scary part yeah, of the, yes. the, the yeah. scary parts. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many people in our audience have watched the first episode of Black Mirror. Joan All is awful. I, I would imagine. If you amazing. haven't, it's a must watch. It's amazing. Right? How close are we to kind of that being a reality through <laughs> do you want to know the truth? Like scanning of celebrities and Yeah. Yeah, I do. The mm. truth is the only part of that episode that was fake was the fact that a streaming service was able to capture somebody's life that quickly. Everything else that happened in that episode basically already happens to some degree. The idea Holy that shit. we could have a digital Salma Hayek, there probably already mm -hmm. is a digital Salma Hayek that has been scanned, well, mm -hmm. you know? 
I mean, essentially what they were saying is just like our phones listen to us. If I just start yelling out cat food a lot, eventually I will get cat <laughs> food ads. Mattresses, something. Right, right. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. Jonah's Awful was was a, a, an exaggerated version of that where the algorithm was looking at your life and then spewing your life back out to other people as entertainment. So I would say most of that episode is already happening. When the actual big kicker of when we could like imitate someone's life that quickly, I don't think we should. Is it possible? Probably, oh, wow. if somebody put in the time, but maybe not that quickly. That was very fast. It was like happening hours later, not even. Yeah, instantly. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. To jump on this bandwagon, there's the Bruce Willis thing where, you know, he's unfortunately, um, health is failing and he's scanned mm-hmm. himself and is now churning out a movie every six to eight weeks from Europe. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. we, and yeah, and it's just, I don't know. Like, I remember, um, I'm old enough to remember those commercials from the 90s where they would put Michael Jackson in somewhere alongside, you know, Bing Crosby. So, um, and also we saw holograms, which I know is a different technology, but, it, oh. you know, it, 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 it's starting to all look like Marvel movies in real life. With uh, Indiana Jones, Harrison Ford, there's young Harrison Ford in it. And it, yeah, it's like... The Irishman, <laughs> sorry. Oh, and there's that tragedy oh, called, yeah. <laughs> from yeah. Netflix called The Irishman, too. Right. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. And I mean, this actually, this kind of dates back, right, to just simple face replacement, right, from uh, mm-hmm. Brandon Lee in uh, The Crow, right? Mm-hmm. They yep. had to finish some scenes and they did some face replacement. So I think I wouldn't be surprised. In fact, I think I've heard it. I don't think it from any official source, but the top 1% of actors are getting scanned simply for insurance yes. purposes to yeah. be able to complete a film if there was a tragedy. Yep. Right. Not only that, but to also like the idea of supporting their family after they've passed or something like that. Yeah. It's, you know, instead of somebody else just, hey, I'm just going to yeah. use your brand and use your name to make money. I can still use you. And right. most of the time for someone's voice, you really only have to have a minute or two, maybe three minutes. I think it's three minutes, actually. Three minutes of solid recording of their voice to teach the AI. And then whatever you type is, they'll say it. You know, and the more you teach it, the better it will be. Didn't James Earl Jones do that? Yep, that's how they did some of the yep. Darth Vader scenes in Obi Wan. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. so it, it, he so, still gets credit because it's his voice, but it wasn't new mm-hmm. lines. It was we trained his voice on Darth Vader clips from previous films, and then had AI punch out new lines with that voice. Right, which could go on. I mean, that, Disney. Yeah. It's Disney. It could go on for hundreds of years. If, yeah, infinitely. If, if, yeah. Right. yeah. And aren't we getting a new uh, Beatles song? Are we really? Yeah, they fed in all the notes to like the last recorded that never came out. Yeah. Last, yeah. And then AI finished it. <laughs> I know. Oh, that's so. just, I, 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 I will film. say this uh, uh, to, to, to kind of just add a, a point to, to where it's going to go. I do fear a world where our media is not really us. You know what I mean? Yes, it's it's like, der- I fear a world where all of our media is just derived from new content that is essentially using the leftovers of what we really made in the past. And right. at that point, right. will we will we be as engaged, right? It's like, mm-hmm. when I'm sitting in a theater, if I know this was all AI, do I care as much, right? It's Maybe it's not my favorite director anymore, but maybe it's just AI. Maybe I know that that's a digital likeness of my actor and that wasn't them. That wasn't their decision. That was what AI thought they might do based on previous decisions, you know? And every actor is not going to approach a role the same. So that's kind of where I fear that media won't have that same feel. In the interest of churning out, like like movie after movie or like just for them to make money. Yeah, I mean, it does kind of feel like Studio films now are <laughs> very much based on previous successes and previous ideas. Oh, yes. But <laughs> so many. Yeah. If these mm-hmm. learning models are only regurgitating things from the past, then what's being invented that's new? Mm-hmm. Combinations of, of things from the past, but yeah, new ideas and new experiences and new mm-hmm. life stories that is what we'll be missing. Yeah. Well, that's the human part still. That's the human yes. part. That's we why we back still to need, that in this. That's why we need jobs. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we'll keep our jobs for now. Hey, Christian, what's the most important thing about film production? The setup. Pre-production. The most yeah. important part. But you know what? A lot of people think that, but you're kind of missing a step. Oh, right. The kickoff calls. Because that's how you set up your prep. 
Right. That's where you got to get all the right questions answered at the right time and set deadlines for those answers so you can put your prep on the right path to success. Exactly. Right. And this can be accomplished with four kickoff calls. You need at least four, in my opinion. And I think for us producers, the most important one is the one with your producing partner, either the ad agency producer or your main client contact, because that's where, like you said, set the tone, set expectations, give them deadlines for when you need these answers, because timelines are already way too short for prep. I know we could always use more prep time, right? And budgets are shrinking, so don't waste any time. So what we've done is we put together our top seven questions that you should ask your agency producer or client now on that very first kickoff call. Not only does it help answer questions that you may have, it also allows you to set the tone and, you know, establish yourself as the leader of the project, (laughs) which is also a very important step as well. So we'll put a link in the show notes where you can get on our website and take a listen to our free audio bonus. Another delightful conversation between me and Sister Christian about (laughs) best ways of setting yourself up for success. Yeah, it's a page turner. (laughs) (laughs) Check it out. Yeah. Well, we know this technology has been very popular in gaming. Um, I know because I've just seen it from like Far Cry, like yeah. starting at Far Cry and then going all the way to number six, which was unbelievable. Um, it's just, you know, the the pre, you know, game, the t- 20 minutes to an hour and a half of pre-game before you actually get to start controlling yeah, the character. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, all that shit has changed so much. Have you seen any applications in commercial or branded content, though, which would be, you know, like for advertising? It's where the money is. You know, if I haven't seen it to where I knew that it was Mm -hmm. there, but I wouldn't be surprised because I I feel like that's one of the easiest ways to apply it, right, is commercials. They're only a couple of seconds, especially nowadays. AI can sound very Mm -hmm. good when you have a three-second clip. You don't give me enough time to realize that that's not the real person. I wouldn't even be able to tell. I haven't seen it personally used. No, really, yeah. (laughs) There, there. I hate to say it, and I, I was at one point an aspiring voice, you know, actor, and still uh, would too. do it. I, I, I still am. Yeah, <laughs> but um, yeah, it's it's going to be a whole different ball game. But yeah, I, I haven't personally seen it. Not anything that I could point out specifically. It's been mostly in film. Online content is using it on a lot, and video games is about to step into a place where it's going to change again as a medium there's something they're doing with video games that's that's <laughs> that will start putting us in ready player one territory well so um, how far away are we from that oh two? it's here it's yeah within oh, yeah. yeah it's here it's here <laughs> it's it's a matter of it's a matter of combining all of the pieces we have We have the recipe. We got to cook the food now and present you the plate. That's really where we're at. We have the recipe. It's like, hey, could we do this? Yes, we can. Can we do that? Yes, we can. Is all of this together just Ready Player One? Yes, it is. Like, that's where we're at. All right. So is is there a world in the not so distant future that we can start to create a performance? We talked about creating performance from video Mm -hmm. without without markers, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. How about scanning an actor and not relying on any sort of human mocap actor just having the scan will there with will there be a world where they we have enough data about how humans move oh i see okay and you could just scan an actor and have them perform um as far as performance it may be hard um, to 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 get everything you would want, especially if you're trying to get like an emotional scene, a funny scene, things like that. What we do have right now is we have digital likenesses saved. I can use X Y Z actor whenever I have the approval to use them. Says, yeah, yeah, I can probably do a lot with your face, and people may not realize that it wasn't you. But getting full on performances that tell a story, I have not really quite seen yet. And if they are doing it, it's not good enough to pass in a Hollywood, air quotes, Hollywood setting. Is there a world where that could be possible? 100%. I think there's a world where they'll be able to ask an actor from their home, hey, can you just put on your iPhone, run this scene, and just send us the recording? And then they run that video from their home through an app. That app gets their body movement. They attach it to their digital likeness. There's a world where they don't have to be on set, I think, is what's more... Right. Real. Okay. And that's okay. the pay structure because um, one of the things that we learned through um, the SAG strike was <laughs> was um, what they want to do with background actors, which mm-hmm. is have them come in for one day, scan them, and then use them repeatedly for the rest of their lives again as background actors. 
That's oh, it. Oh, and that's a whole different so, negotiation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh-huh. and I can I know that, you know, background in TV shows usually make close to minimum wage, you know, mm-hmm. it's not a lot of money. They're not, not making right. a yeah. lot. Yeah. But that said, it's like uh, you know, that is unacceptable in perpetuity mm-hmm. stuff or any of that is unacceptable. I would say if I had any advice for people out there who are coming across this, do not give out your digital likeness without some sort of like negotiation process yeah. and you're getting paid for every use. Do not do not let, like get yourself bought out. Just don't. Right, but there's not e- there's no standards yet. Yeah, there is. Like we have I mean and I know that that's what we're fighting for is to get standards yeah. in place early mm-hmm. on <laughs> so mm-hmm. that we understand like our motion capture actors in danger of having less work? Um, I don't think so. I, I think, again, because we, we still need to capture that data at some point, you know, and I feel that they'll still prefer that it at least comes from the actual person to some degree, whether that's showing up mm-hmm. in suit, whether that's recording yourself on, on an iPhone in a few years, it's, it's at least still coming from that person. Um, I don't think mocap actors are in danger uh, yet. I think there could right. be a world this where they may be. This generation of them are still yeah, good. Okay. Yeah, I, I would say, like I said, I think voice actors are, are more in the crosshair right now because oh, I yeah. just I just have to hear your voice. And if something can copy you, then what's what's the point? So now I'm seeing a lot of people, sometimes in mocap you'll find in video games, uh, the voice actor does not want to do the mocap part. So they'll actually hire somebody mm-hmm. who's the body of whatever main character, oh. and then the voice actor just does the voice. We're starting to see more of these voice actors and actresses do both now because it's like how do i remain relevant and valuable if my voice Mm -hmm. can just be copied well you can't copy my body yet so i might as well perform as well and do the whole shebang hence these video games that are so lifelike now and they have big stars in them too (laughs) like people people are running to do a video game it's 200 hours worth of content I, I don't know the exact term, but it's theater performance brought back in technology. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's it's oh, it's. A, what do they call those? What do they call the theaters where the the people sit completely around you? There's like a particular name for those types of theaters, right? Theater in the round, maybe, Immersive. Or maybe. Yeah, okay. But it's it's like mm-hmm. performing on on that sort of stage where the audience is all around mm-hmm. you. They see every angle of you. Because of that stage plays there's a lot in your imagination right set pieces can give you a little bit of a set but most of the Mm -hmm. time it's in your imagination and we have found a lot of actors come to the mocap set who have never done mocap and almost prefer it because they're like whoa this is like when i was a kid this is like being in theater again i I, i'm allowed to be more imaginative and more expressive in such a way because i don't have to play to a certain camera not not all the time a lot of these things can be captured later After I've already right. done the performance, mm-hmm. I can just go back in. Someone like me can go back in with a digital camera and get any angle I want, whatever pickups right. or things like that, as long as we have the data. Well, I was just going to make a, a small point of like, if you're filming exteriors or a snow scene or something like that, it's very hard on the actor. You only have so mm-hmm. much, mm-hmm. you know, ability to be outside and weather like that. So yeah, yeah. I could see um, the benefits of doing it and then placing them into that type of scene. Mm-hmm. And when you're recording these motion capture actors, it's it's volumetric, right? You're not shooting them from an angle. You're Correct. shooting them, as you said, from this array of cameras. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So once you have that data, you can select what angle, which, which point Correct. of view, the yeah, lens I mean, size, the lighting, all of it. We had a situation, I won't say on what project, but we had a situation where um, we were <laughs> <Can> we using... <laughs> Uh, no, (laughs) No, um, we had a situation where we were using a virtual camera, which you can actually see if you look at the avatar way of water behind the scenes, um, Mm -hmm. we're using Mm -hmm. actually that camera that's in that behind the scenes. And, um, just due to like technology and things like that, the camera was very laggy in response time. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. we couldn't capture this fast, big scene in the, in the sort of way that the director wanted. So what did we do? Well, we just waited for less for, for less technology to be being used at once. And what I mean by that is we just shot it, waited till the actors left. I repopulated the scene with their digital characters. Mm-hmm. And then the director ran around with the, the camera with no lag now because it's the only thing operating and was able to shoot the scene with no one there. We were on an empty volume. Yeah. 
So that, I mean, sorry, I'm floored by that because I know I, am too. I, I know what it's like to for a director to not be getting what they want, and then you have to cut them short because you don't have money to continue, and blah mm-hmm. blah blah, and pl- or like a lar- a very well known actor will only give you so many takes. Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Uh, we had the so, ability yeah, to to I get can... that scene. And it was it was a really big scene. It was it was right at the beginning, and and um, was it John watch, Wick four? It was not. <laughs> it was not. <laughs> Damn it! But it was it was one of those things where where you watch it back, um, you would never know that that's how it was shot with no one in the volume because technology was just acting up. And we said, hey, we can just get it later. Let's move on. Wow, this that's is... insane. Yeah, yeah. All right, I. I personally i know christian you as well we cannot wait i'm to so talk fucking about excited this. okay but i'm so fucking excited in our pre interview we <laughs> talked about uh you mentioned that there is a lot of this kind of scanning of personalities happening in the adult film industry mhm <laughs> We want to know everything. We want to know everything. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us. I am so oh, I was know. like, oh, man. what? Let's now go. I wish I knew more. <laughs> what I will say is this. Um, we could research. We could do a part two. Yes. If we <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, what I will say is this. And most of this just comes from knowing what the technology is capable of. And all it takes is someone to be like, wait, I can do this. And I'm starting to see it already. Let's say mm. you are an adult content creator. And you don't mind showing your actual body off online, but what if you could achieve the same success and not have to actually show your physical body online? What if it was a digital scan of your naked body? You know what I mean? So if you're tired that day. Exactly. Yeah. Or yeah. Like it's exhausting. Yeah. Yeah. When you start (laughs) thinking about the idea of being able to capture mocap just on your iPhone, which I'm sure every adult content creator has most of this time, that's what they're using. And you have your digital likeness, you're able to create the same type of content that's still of your body, which is what people are subscribing for, if it's something like OnlyFans or whatever, and put out content with actually showing like your physical self. You have now something that your body doesn't change. It looks how it did when you scanned it. It'll always look that good. You know what I mean? So there's definitely an application there. And we all know there's people out there who would still purchase that. <laughs> like it's just it it is what 1, it is. Everyone everyone yeah. has their thing and and um we're starting to see more just influencers as a whole want digital likenesses. But on the adult side, yes, you're just you're able to not worry about what? age and time making you seem air quotes again less attractive or something like that. Cause you can just immortalize sure. how you looked in that moment. Well, it's hard to have the emotional fortitude to be up all the time. Yeah. And yeah. as a, as those types of genres that you just mm-hmm. mentioned, it's that's it's solely based on your personality and the mm-hmm. ability to please someone visually. Yes. yes. And so this would absolutely uh fit that mold it sounds like. And and furthermore, did you guys ever see the 2013 movie Her with Joaquin Phoenix? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we are in that realm right now. That is entirely possible. I wouldn't be surprised if... You heard it here first. I wouldn't be surprised if either the next (laughs) iPhone... If either the next iPhone or the one after. It's going to happen within the next two. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if Siri is at something similar to what her was in that Mm. movie. Because what you can do with ChatGPT, which is a text-based AI right now, and the type of conversations Mm -hmm. you can have with it... How is that not just what Siri's doing already? You know what it's I mean? It's pretty creepy. So <laughs> yeah, I, I know. Don't want to have to manage another relationship. Like, Jesus, <laughs> how many There's, people I mean, do Alexa's I have to... already too much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But imagine just being it. What if you're just having a down day? Your friends are not available. And you should be like, Alexa, I'm not feeling good today. I, you know, I had a bad day at work. And she's just like, let's talk about it. And you just have a whole conversation with Alexa. And at the end of that conversation, 30, 40 minutes later, you go, why do I feel better after talking to Alexa? Oh, <laughs> or, you know? Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Or worse. I can see uh, this in car technology too like uh you know already it's like hey mercedes can you blah 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 yeah so i mean well, so <laughs> i'm a big advocate would, for self-driving cars so yes it's already i was being used. thinking about this uh, going back to commercials and branded content i was thinking about this in terms of car commercials right so many times i've i'm sure you have two christian done a car commercial with a car that is not yet on the market it's literally being it's barged super in. super secret, and there's only four it's, in the country. Yeah, and it's being barged <laughs> in from from uh, Japan. Japan. <laughs> it's the yep. only one we have, so we can't dent it, damage it, or and anything. And unfortunately, it's white. 
Yeah. Yeah, like that always white. happened. The director wanted the Which red one, but here we wants. are with the white one. Yep. And and we're <laughs> driving it around on Puerto Puerto Ranch or PCH or, or Mulholland B- Drive. The or BQE. BQE. <laughs> I've done that. And uh, and so I can I can see a world where that is scanned in Japan. Mm. And Jesus. maybe we don't. Yeah. We, maybe it's too big, but maybe you yeah. know, scan it, but and then, then we just go out and we just drive the streets and get the background right. plates, right? Yeah, which yeah. which w- w- would require half the amount of crew. I mean, I think CG in general covers a lot of that sometimes, right? I feel like they use CG very often in the car commercials, and even just in in a traditional uh, sense, where we could, yeah, use it in terms of scanning or things like that is yeah you probably could scan a car and eventually they will probably be 3d printers that can punch out a car i wouldn't be surprised you know uh, um there's a lot of things that 3d printers do already that are fascinating at a smaller scale but it's not a matter of if it can be done i definitely think it can be done it's whether or not somebody wants or needs to do it at this point you know I know when you watch a movie that happens in space, um, <laughs> they print meat, <laughs> which is disgusting. I know, <laughs> right, right. But I, I <laughs> but how else can you see this technology being used? I don't know. I feel like the ways we're doing it right now. I mean, besides the obvious route, which is like you know, iRobot, Terminator, like just Android mm. things like that, which is possible. I will tell you right now that that's possible. If you take yeah, Skynet, I already know. <laughs> if you take Tesla's Project Optimus, which is mm-hmm the body itself, and you take mm-hmm. something as smart as ChatGPT and you bring them together, what do you have? A car that is smarter than me oh. or that has that yeah. has the ability to access every other computer in the world and learn something yeah. faster than I can. Very Matrix, by the yeah, way. Yeah, so besides that route, which is, which is kind of where we're headed, um, I don't really know. I feel like we've, at least for now, have scratched the surface on all the things that we can mm-hmm. use AI for that, that are the obvious choices. I don't know. I can't think of off the top of my head what could be something else besides just creating like smart homes and whatnot where, you know, Alexa is now your whole house as opposed to just a speaker. Uh, You know what I mean? And then where that could become something else. Now, it may not be your refrigerator's AI, but Alexa can control your refrigerator and then control temperatures and do this. Alexa, tell me how, uh, based on the cheese in my cupboard, does that look like it's spoiled? Like, I feel like that's eventually where it'll end up being, (laughs) where you don't really have to do those things yourself anymore. Um, Yeah, give me five meals that I can cook that's on uh, with the shit Based on what's in the fridge. Oh, that's nice. Or um, fast food restaurants will be the first things to go. I will say that. That's my opinion. Yeah, we already have the first personless McDonald's, right? Yep, fast food restaurants will be the first thing to go. Which is goes back to my point about capitalism. I feel like <laughs> if capitalism has its way, it's not going to help us do our jobs easier. It's going to replace our jobs. But that's my own. I think AI in some in some industries will com- will be what people right. are afraid of, where it's just going to take over factory jobs. Uh, mm-hmm. Yes, yes, yeah. and once again, yeah. see how I repetitive mentioned the, te- factory the jobs. tedious, repetitive things. It's going to take away all of that, and for some people, that is their way of life. And in that case, it right. is scary, yeah. and they don't for want a lot that. of people. Mm-hmm. Lot yeah, of for people. for I, I would argue for most people actually to correct myself yes. for saying yes. some for most yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I feel like fast food restaurants offer employment as low as it is to people who need it, too. So that that's a real bummer. <laughs> yeah, but, we already know that that's how that industry operates is how yeah, can I do this totally. for right. cheaper? How can I cut out cheaper. more costs? Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. Marcus, we really appreciate all the time and knowledge you've shared with us. This is this is really amazing. Before we end this episode, we would like to ask you, what can we do as producers, mostly live action producers Mm -hmm. and production teams who make up most of our audience? How can we stay on top of this technology and and, uh, understand the processes and the steps involved so we can speak smartly once this starts to become a part of a a little bit more of a normal integration into live action production? I I think the biggest thing that I would want to pass on to people is that just being open to the technology and, and, and not shunning it immediately. Correct. Mm -hmm. Because any new technology or any new anything that could be world changing is typically used nefariously to start. Um, Just to use a quick example, cryptocurrency. It's going to be used Uh, nefariously to start. And then eventually, as time goes on and people see, they know what the scams are, they know what not to do, they know this, it will become something that will uh, will be a better tool for us. So openness is a big thing. Um, As live action producers, you may end up working on a set where they use the big LED wall 
right? Yeah. That big AR sure. wall. Already done that's that. that's yeah. usually yeah. Already. Unreal Engine that's running a lot of the graphics in yeah. that background and Unreal is tapping into AI a lot. So it will become part of the of the live action setting in terms of, you know, using technology like that. But again, openness, uh, willingness to learn so that you don't feel like you're that you fall behind, even if it's just not that you're going to use it, just necessarily that you understand it. And if and when that were to ever get to a point where it's not being regulated, you have the knowledge to talk and 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 fight back whatever they might be doing at that point. If it were to get to that, you know, that 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 situation, because if you don't learn it and it starts to get used nefariously, then you're just going to be on the side of shun it. It goes away. We don't need it. And I do right. think there will be great applications probably within the medical field, honestly, that AI will will help in, in a lot of ways. I was just about to say that. Are we going to see robot surgeries? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, for sure. For sure. Because yeah. now it's no longer or, about a human needing to have a steady hand. It's just no. going to it's going to be perfect to the to the down to a mathematical level. You know, like in Hotel Artemis. Um, I don't know if anybody here saw it. Never mind. So um, they print livers in that one. So, well, yeah, that's what um, I was going to say. Can we print or? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I think um, we have yeah. tried. I think we have I tried and done it. I highly recommend Hotel Artemis, if anybody's okay. interested okay. in that. Right. Anything. So um, where can we go to learn about that? Do you have any recommendations of where we can go to learn about this tech at all? Uh, some of this tech is free. I would say the best way to learn about it is just use it, honestly. Uh, ChatGPT, I think, is a great barrier to entry right. on, on mm -hmm. AI. Um, get creative with it. See if it can write you a story or tell it mm -hmm. that it's Michael Jackson and then tell it to write you a song. You know what I mean? And, and mm -hmm. just see what it can do and see what uses that can help for you in a way that would be a tool and not it's getting rid of your job. Um, Mid Journey, uh, I, I would say look up Mid Journey. That's where most of the AI art that you're seeing is coming from. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. And then, I mean, just YouTube, you know, AI, yeah, uh, machine totally. learning, and you'll find things from mm -hmm. Epic Games. You'll find things from NVIDIA. NVIDIA just did an insane AI conference. Uh, yeah. And I think if just following those few aspects of AI right now, they're kind of the, the, they're the forefront, you know, they're, they're right. the first, the first to the gold rush are everything I just mentioned right now. <laughs> so what I'm hearing is that, um, we need to use AI. AI mm -hmm. should not be using us. We should Correct. make AI our bitch. I got it. Right. Yeah. You got it. Yes. Yeah. 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 In the same ways, and I want to bring this up because I think it's very important In the same ways that the 2d artists felt so like, I don't know what the right word is, but they felt like they were being replaced when us 3D artists came yes. in. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. 3D, sure. If you didn't, if you weren't willing to learn, it felt like you were being replaced. Okay. Same and with digital cameras versus di film yes, cameras, by exactly. the way. Same thing. Exactly. Yep. And film cameras mm -hmm. still to this day have their uses. You know, there are some directors that yeah, prefer to totally. shoot on film because of that mm -hmm. look that it gives you. Sure. Um, but from the 2D to 3D thing, if you don't, if you're not willing to learn, you will be replaced. Um, 3D to AI. First, I'd like to point out that 3D to AI had much less time to to blossom and 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 be a thing uh, before AI has started to take over. 2D had like 50, 60 years. We got about 30 before yeah. we were uh, facing <laughs> being Single replaced. Single cell animation. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. again, if you're a 3D artist and you're worried about AI, learn it so you don't get replaced. You know, Hear and you'll have a better it. understanding. I love it. Thank you so much for spending your time with us tonight. I mean, this has been me. fascinating. Fascinating. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Right. I hope, I hope your, your listeners feel the same. I, I, I tend to go on long winded rambles that lose the point. So <laughs> no, um, no, no. Uh, it was very informative and you absolutely, you nailed it. It's really easy mm -hmm. to uh, stoke fear and mm -hmm. talk about all the bad things. Yes. So learning some stuff and understanding some stuff about what's happening is is very beneficial to everybody. Yeah. Marcus, if people want to... Oh, sorry, Christian. Nope. Go ahead. Marcus, if people want to get a hold of you and learn more uh, or learn what uh, Rouge Mocap does, mm -hmm. how do people get a hold of you? Uh, I would say I probably primarily only really use Instagram right now. Um, and it's very, Dang. yeah, yeah. It's so I, 2015 I'm, of you. <laughs> yeah. I'd, say, I'd say Instagram and Twitter, but those are like two different identities. That's like one's my yeah, gaming yeah, no. and then this is more my personal. <laughs> um, but if you if you wanted to, to, to catch me on Instagram, um, um, mm. the name is just Marcus Silvera, V-O. Um, I'm by no means a social media influencer, so I'm not trying to plug myself. That's just the best way to get a hold of me if you don't already know.
know me. Um, and yeah, I mean, feel free to ask questions and feel free if you are not more knowledgeable than I am, feel free to correct me. And whatever the case, like I said, I'm an open book and I, I want to hear the other side because I'm always about learning and just understanding everyone else's opinion because I can't, everyone can't be me and I can't be everyone. So let's try to be something together. <laughs> and Lawrence, if people, if people want you, how do they get you? Oh, they definitely want me. Uh, I'm at lawrencetlewis.com. And speaking of voiceover, I'm also at voiceoflawrence.com. Christian, how about you? Sisterchristianproduces.com. All right. Thank you all. We'll see you in a couple weeks. Thank you. Producers Happy Hour is brought to you with the help of the handsome Christopher Daniels, who is a design and branding specialist, and Brendan Russell at podlad.com, who is our fabulous editor. If you enjoy this podcast and want to dive deeper, subscribe to our listeners' newsletter. Simply go to producershappyhour.com to sign up. Thanks for listening, and remember, enjoy happy hour while you can. Because making shit is hard. Hard. hard.